Hello, and welcome to my series on OpenGL Oversimplified. The purpose of this series is I had at least one person reach out to me and say, hey, I love your videos, but could you go into more detail on explaining things by analogies and making sure that we can sort of conceptually understand OpenGL inside and out, which I 100% agree with. I think that's a great idea. So I wanted to kick this video off it's a little weird, perhaps, but just some tips on how to get started learning OpenGL. I'm going to come at it from a number of angles. The first angle is psychologically, okay? Because it turns out learning OpenGL is quite similar to learning everything else, a lot of other things. Maybe you're coming in here, you're a young teenager and you don't have any experience with trying to learn things in the past, but if you're coming in and you've tried things before, you feel like maybe you've not gotten the success that you wanted to get, I just want to start things off right and say, hey, if you've had any sort of feelings of failure, just leave that at the door. This is a new thing. This is a new page, okay? If you're wondering, I've been experimenting with some things, you know, can I, can I get into graphics programming? Can I get into game dev? Whatever you want. I'm here to tell you right now that you are always good enough to start. So never... Never limit yourself in that sense, okay? Now, if we were talking about sort of the psychological factors we can have for our mindset, which help us, give us the best possible chance to succeed, it's number one, having the ability to sort of block out background noise. I don't mean literally block out background noise. I mean, if you're thinking about OpenGL and you're thinking about programming ex experiences you've had in the past or things which worked or didn't work, being able to just zero in, even temporarily, will be a good, it'll, it'll pay dividends. By the way, side note, if I say anything in this series which sounds a little kooky or a little, like, a little, frankly, a little dumb, it's because I've made every mistake possible. If I say something that sounds a little dumb, it's because I've done it. <laughs> um, but yeah, just... Just number one, be able to block out the background noise. Number two, we learn effectively when we're interested in what we're doing. Okay. Maybe you think that learnopengl.com is the best, most interesting website in the world. And it is pretty good. It does a good job of summarizing information. But the real benefit in using a resource is applying it to your own uh, fields of interest. And yeah, for a certain extent, you have to sort of tread the road and... Um, get the information, but a really big component of that is making your own stuff. So make it interesting to you, make your own stuff. That's number two. Number three, superpower in learning things is being stubborn. Now, I don't mean that you want to implement a certain technique and you have just one way that you want to do it and you can't switch around because you're fixed on doing it the one way. What I mean is you're stubborn in the sense that you have a problem, you want to solve the problem, and if you find that your technique isn't working, you're still really stubborn, you still want to solve it. So you go back and you'll try to approach it from a different angle. If you are stuck on a problem and you feel like a dog, like a pit bull whose jaws have locked and you physically can't rip yourself away from it, that's probably a pretty good start. I've done that many times, okay? Being able to persist, being able to do something and not make progress, but come at it the next day and just keep coming at it. That will really help. So, if in doubt, practice regularly. The best thing you can do is always show up. Think about it like dropping a... Well, oh, this is a bad analogy, but I'll say it anyway. The coin will drop eventually. But in order for the coin to drop, you have to be there every day holding it up. Okay, so another thing to bear in mind, learning is like making a friend, okay? It takes time, it's a long-term commitment, but it will pay off. You are not going to become a tech bro. What up, Code Ninja? Today we're going to use JavaScript to make a, a to-do app. Whoa, boom! Remember guys, smash that like button, give it a ninja smash. Did you smash it? Did you smash it? Do you know what I mean? Uh, you'll, be, you'll be more like a blacksmith. You'll have highly specialized skills which take time to develop. The thing with OpenGL, on the surface, it's easy enough to get started, but 
you can keep continually hammering in on those techniques and improving that and honing that. And then you'll go and you'll take that and you'll bring it to Vulkan, you'll bring it to WebGPU, Metal, DirectX, if you're a bit of a weirdo, and your those, those concepts, those concepts will apply in other fields. So that's the the meat of it really. Learning things, one of my um one of my favorite professors from university where I went to said, uh, well begun is half done. So if you can have the right mindset, you'll find that the path gets easier along the way. Now, a few specific things, uh, language specific resources. If you are coming in and you're doing C++, you might find learnopengl.com is a great resource. I strongly recommend it. You might find that you need to go and learn programming in conjunction with that if you don't have a lot of programming experience. So Learn CPP is probably the best resource for beginners. It's free. Apart from that, supplement with Google. Now, Learn CPP is sort of backed up by a textbook. So if you really want to, if you have the money and you want to get a textbook as a reference, C++ Primer is the textbook which Learn CPP is based off of. This is probably the best, most useful C++ book I've read, and I haven't even read that much of it, because it's dry, it's boring, but it is a good textbook. Apart from that, just going through the exercises is good. Okay, so if you are coming in from a Python background or if you're coming in from a language which doesn't like, like it can use OpenGL, but it's not C++, Python specifically, it makes me sad when people come to me, students who I tutor, and they say, hey, which, which Udemy course should I buy? Because it's Python. Come on, man. It's Python. Pretty much every website is Learn Python. <laughs> uh, W3 Schools is probably a good place to start. And then just there's a there's a glut of uh, learning Python resources. So what, what I'd recommend is find any resource free online if you need it um, to learn Python. And then look at learnopengl.com and use that in conjunction supplement it as needed with other materials. I have a course on, I have a free course on YouTube with, which is um, OpenGL with Python. It's pretty good. I think specifically the first nine or so videos is really good for, for getting the basics. Strongly recommend that, but you should be able to find all sorts of courses online. The info is out there. Now we've got that. So we have sort of our psychological bedrock that we're starting with, our base level. We have our language resources. The other thing, which is really useful, this is the last thing I'll mention, is it's really great to reach out to people and be part of a community. Now, personally, um, I run a Discord server. I have the link down below. Um, I try to build up a community where we all sort of build each other up, answer each other's questions, and that sort of stuff. So yeah, this has been my little intro on how to start learning OpenGL. Hope that's useful and best of luck. It's a graphics programming is a lot of fun.